Hello world creators! We are going to look at dictionaries in Godot in this video. Beginners tend to vastly underestimate dictionaries, or hash maps, how other programming languages call them. But stick with me until the end of the video and you will see that they are real powerhouses of data management when used properly. But first, let's go for a quick introduction. Dictionaries are one of the three container variables in Godot and are often referred to as containers with key and value pairs. We can create tuples consisting of a key, or name, and a value that goes together with that key. This value can be anything from an integer over a string to an array or another dictionary. In essence, a key and a value behave similar to a variable and its value. Then why do we use dictionaries and not simple variables? With dictionaries, we can group information that belongs together in one single place, just like with enums which are grouping together relevant constants. But dictionaries have a few more advantages over enums. Let's take an example like the player or enemy stats. Instead of creating a ton of single variables, we could nest them all into a dictionary and handle them in there. But a disclaimer here, this is just for demonstration purposes for now to keep it simple. So what's the difference between storing something in a dictionary or have loose variables? The effects of this will truly be notable when the scale of a project increases and becomes more complex. Dictionaries are more dynamic and flexible, making it easier to maintain as a project scales when compared to normal variables. For example, they can be iterated through and updated with a for loop, instead of calling single variables one by one. This helps your code to become much cleaner as we can update many variables on a debuff, for example, by passing it into a function as a dictionary instead of passing a ton of different variables. When adding new variables, we don't have to change all the function calls and the function's expected parameters, but only have to add the new key and value pair to the dictionary. Last but not least, dictionaries allow for more complex information structuring. Just like arrays can contain other arrays, dictionaries allow the nesting of other dictionaries in a more complex environment with this, a single dictionary could hold the information of our inventory and we can store our inventory dictionary as a safe data inside of a safe state dictionary that saves our entire game's progress together with all player or enemy stats, achievements, level progress, UI settings, etc. Now, this was a lot of theory. So let's jump into some code to see how we actually work with dictionaries and what methods can be used. We have a few cases we're going to go through here one by one. So let's start with accessing values. Accessing values is as easy as calling your dictionary name, opening the brackets, and in here, we will write the name of the key that we want to find. For example, I could access the health value just like this. If I were to print this, what this does is that it's going to give me um, the value that the key health has. So it's going to print 10. Let's see if it works. And indeed, it's printing 10. We can also change values by doing pretty much the same. We also call a dictionary and then this time I'm going to call my speed variable which is sitting at 300 and I want to change it to 400. What you can also do is add new values. It is pretty much the same as accessing a key that is already existing but in this case I'm calling wisdom which I do not have inside of my dictionary yet and I assign it the value of 10. And I assign it the value of 10. And if we now print our dictionary, which we can do by writing print and my dictionary, what you will find is that we have now two changes. So first, my speed has now increased to 400. It was 300 before. And we added wisdom to our dictionary. But what we can do is also erase values. And that is as easy as writing my dictionary again dot erase and here in the brackets we'll just put in the name of the key that we want to erase in this case for example i could go for the mana and if i print the dictionary again we will see that mana has now been erased from the list here we still have the mana and here it is gone it continues with experience what we also can do is erase all the elements of our dictionary. It's simple as writing my dictionary dot clear. And with this, we will see that we have now an empty dictionary. 
copy paste this, run again, and we see a dictionary now is empty. What we can do with the dictionary as well is check if it is actually an empty dictionary or if we have elements in it. So in our case, if my dictionary that is empty, then I want to do something. And the something what we, that we want to do is take my dictionary and give it a new key called not empty and give it the value of, I don't know, one. Now, if we can again print our dictionary, we will see that we have now one value in it, which is, uh, which is not empty and one. We can check also if a dictionary has a certain key. And in my case, if I want to check if my dictionary dot has, and I write here the name of the key that I want, has not empty. And if he has not empty, I want him to print my not empty. And if we run this, oh no, we have a complaint from our compiler. The reason is I made a few typos here and he could not find our value. What we can do to prevent our game from crashing is we use the get function. Then we can just tell him to get this. If he does not have it, he's, not no, he's now not going to break, but instead he's returning a null. So he's just returning empty and our game is not breaking, we can continue. And we have another useful get function, which is if I take my dictionary and say get or add, as you have it down here, if I don't have that key, what I want you to do is to add that key for me. And I will add the, I will add the not empty. And of course, what we do is print this again to see the result. As you will see, he has now added not empty, but without any value to it. If you want to add a value as well with the get or add function, write a comma and then give it the value that you want it to have. And as you can see, not empty now has a value of 99 that we gave it. Very nice. So what else we can do? We can iterate through our dictionary with a for loop. We could, for example, write for items in my dictionary. And what I want to do is then to print items. So that is the key. I want him to print out the key. I give him a little spacing and a semicolon. And then I want him to write my dictionary and whatever that item value is. Running this, we see that he's also going to print the whole dictionary, but at this time he's going one by one and writes them one on top of the other. This is how you can iterate through a dictionary with a for loop. And we're coming to the end already. You can also check for multiple keys. For example, I can say if my dictionary dot has underscore all, then I can pass here an array of strings that I want him to check on. So I want him to have my not empty and I want him to have my not underscore empty. And in case that he does have that, what we will do is duplicate the dictionary. So I make a new, a new, new variable, so new dictionary. And that is going to be my dictionary dot duplicate. And through that, I have made a duplication of my dictionary. Now with the new, new dictionary, I will add something new, for example, as a key called full, and I give this number of 22. If we print our new dictionary, close the bracket, then what we see is that we have now indeed added something new to the new dictionary. And then what we can do now that we have two different dictionaries, we can also merge dictionaries. So I can just go my dictionary, write dot merge, and I can give it the name of the dictionary that I wanted to merge with, which is in this case, the new dictionary. Keep in mind that when we do this, by default, duplicate keys are not being copied over unless you pass it in here as a true. By default, it's false, and I'm going to leave it like that. And then for the last time, my dictionary. And we would see it will then now have the same values as the new dictionary. Both print the same. If you're interested in more videos about data containers, also check out these videos about enums and arrays. Thank you so much for watching. Keep creating games and see you in the next one.